Welcome to Review Every Vehicle by CitizenCon 2024. The point is to give an update on every vehicle since some haven't had a video made about them in years and others, the information is simply too spread out to be helpful in making decisions. Remember, digital vehicles aren't imaginary, digital vehicles are imagine necessary. Every month we do a giveaway to give back to this wonderful community. This month's giveaway prize is going to be either an Anvil Terrapin or if we hit 6,500 human subscribers before CitizenCon, I will give away an Anvil Carrot. So make sure you share the channel and tell your org mates to come and check us out. To enter the contest, make sure you subscribe to Billionaire Ninjas, leave a comment on at least one video, and like or dislike at least one video. Winners have two weeks to claim their prize. Members collectively have a 25% chance of winning just for being members, so if you're subscribed, consider hitting that join button, and if you're not subscribed, I appreciate you hitting that subscribe button. For the full giveaway details, make sure you visit our Billionaire Ninjas Discord or our social media at Ninjas Leap. Today, we continue our trip through the Tumbrel Manufacturer, and the next vehicles are the Tumbrel Ranger, and it's two very we have the Ranger CV, $35 standalone, 30 war bond, and was 30 at concept. Cost in game is unknown. The RC, $35 standalone, 30 war bond, was 30 at concept. In game cost is unknown. The TR, $40 standalone, 35 war bond, was 35 at concept. Cost in game is unknown. All the Ranger series are still in concept and are time limited for real world purchase. So of course not available for rent in game. Let me start by saying I'm not the biggest fan of purchasing vehicles outside the game with only a few exceptions. So almost always I'm going to suggest buying these in game because they are so cheap, but I'm guessing in the future that will change. And I want these videos to still serve a purpose for people who don't think the same as I do. So I'll rate this as though they do have value as far as spending money. With a powerful frame, proprietary X-Tech adaptive tread tires, and reactive response precision steering and braking, the Tumble Ranger lets you embrace the renegade spirit of the open road while staying thoroughly grounded. Born to tame the wild frontier, the Ranger CV takes adventure touring to the next level and delivers the goods with an auxiliary fuel tank and custom 0.375 SCU pannier. Put the hammer down and pump up the adrenaline with the Ranger RC. Tune for maximum speed and response with advanced propulsion and chassis technology. Adventure doesn't always go to plan, so the Ranger TR comes equipped with dual weapon mounts to make sure you are more than covered. The Tumbrel Ranger RC and TR. For measurements, the Ranger are all the same length, 3.7 meters, beam 2 meters, height 2 meters, and it looks like it will be the second smallest ship in the game after the Mirai Pulse. For crew, the Ranger series all have the same minimum crew of one and maximum crew of one. For SCU, the Ranger series all carry zero SCU, except for the Ranger CV, which can carry 0.375 SCU worth of delivery boxes. All the bikes, though, I would expect to have about 800 50 micro SU of stowage similar to the Mirai Pulse. The claim time for all these vehicles is most likely less than two minutes and the claim time is probably less than one minute and the fee will most likely be less than a thousand credits. For top SEM speed, I would expect these to be very similar to the Cyclone variant, but much faster. So I would say the CV is probably gonna go 45 meters per second, the RC at 51 meters per second, and the TR I expect to be the slowest at 40 meters per second. For weapons, the CV and the RC have no weapons and no missiles. The TR comes stocked with one size one bespoke front turret and no missiles. For hull HP, I would expect all of these to be slightly tougher than the Mirai Pulse on a hull, but the TR will be a bit more tough than the other variants. For shields, the Ranger series will most likely not come with shields considering their price and their size. For vehicle parts, the Rangers all have the same parts. They have one extra small radar, one extra small computer, one extra small power plant, one extra small cooler, and one extra small fuel tank. The CV does add an extra fuel tank. Some special features and amenities for these vehicles are, well, the RC will be faster and have an extra battery, the CV can carry delivery boxes and have more fuel, and of course, the TR will have a weapon. My preferred loadout for these ships will come when they are drivable in-game. 
A quick shout out to the members, my first ninjas, Star Touch and Rob, my Hokage, Old Weeb, my Joni Ninjas, Radium TX, Paleon Tan, The Solid Exodus, Damon Danielson, Dark Wolf God, ETL and Spade, Sean Phillips, and Rage One. Then my Chuni Ninjas, Raygun 972, Walk on Your Side, Scorpio King 3, Soul Galaxia, Meat Salad, Praetorian, Jay Solis, Water Fox Studios, San Chimera, Rotten Treats, BMC, Bears Junkie. Of course, thank you to all my other members who's listed on every level at the end of the video. As always, membership is never required, but always appreciated. You help make this YouTube to dream even more possible so thank all of you a special thanks also to my gifted subscribers now it's time to rate these vehicles a rating i rate from one to ten my one is only buy if you have a unique reason that is specific to you or because you like the looks of the vehicles my 10 is if you have the money these vehicles are almost guaranteed to be useful to you in the game a one doesn't mean the vehicles are useless or ugly and a 10 doesn't mean that the vehicles are perfect just remember these are just our ratings please give us yours in the comments down below and Tumbrel ends after one more vehicle, and then we can get to the backlog. Stay with us. My rating for this vehicle is of course going to be handed out based on which variant we're looking at. The CV Ranger is a seven. The RC Ranger is a seven. And the TR Ranger is a five. Let's start with what I like about these ships. Well, the Ranger seems like one of those ships we know the least about. We kind of had a flash in the pan when it arrived in 2019, and we haven't really heard anything in five years. That being said, the Mirai Pulse arrived, and I immediately thought they decided to make it a hover vehicle instead. I thought, yeah, I don't think we're getting the Ranger anytime soon. And I think I'm right. There's no need to really push the Ranger if we have the Pulse. That being said, these bikes are some of the most sought after things that are still in the concept phase. People want their motorbikes. And to be completely honest with you, I don't own one, but the only racing vehicle or ship in the game that I actually am excited for that I would own is a Ranger RC. A racing off-road motorcycle in the open? That sounds like my kind of racing vehicle. And I'm not a fan of racing at all. Yet somehow this still piques my interest but we still need to see how motorcycle mechanics will differ from the hover bike. What I know though, is that the CV will be only the second hover bike with legitimate cargo capacity, rivaling the Dragonfly. The RC will simply be a pleasure to drive and the TR will be fun at bunkers. The issues that I have with all these vehicles though and how I would fix them. Well, let's start with the CV. Well, not much to say, a bike that can carry cargo instead of a hover bike that can carry cargo. I'm always happy to see more ways of carrying cargo, but I do wonder about the rocks and the trees and the things that this thing is going to hit with that front wheel and whether the mechanics will work correctly. For the TR, I'm a bit nonplussed because of the idea of a guns on a vehicle that is primarily meant to go forward in a straight line with barely any maneuverability. On a hover bike, you have pitch and yaw to aim your weapon. On a motorbike, you just go straight and then lean to turn, but it's not really conducive to getting your shots on target. Also, the X1 Force being the only bike with a shield, it means all other combat bikes are most likely gonna be second fiddle for it, at least until the X1 gets nerfed or the other bikes get buffed. The RC is my favorite of the bunch for reasons I stated before, but still, it needs a secondary purpose for it to make sense in my fleet. It could be stealth, recon, exploration, I really don't care, but let's just not make it a one trick pony. This brings me to why these vehicles are scored as they are. These ships mostly win because of how cheap they are. Otherwise, they might've been scored lower, but they give tons of utility for the purchase price. The CV is a seven, basically because its utility is going to be about exactly what the shallow field of supply vehicles needs. The RC is a seven because it will immediately provide a new type of racer we've never seen before. And I think it will bring more people to the racing genre that may have never touched it before. The TR I think will be great at slow speed for killing things, but when it gets up to speed, I think it will lose a lot of what makes it special. So who are these vehicles for? Well, the CV is for someone who needs to avoid the anti-air that can still detect a dragonfly or for people who prefer wheeled vehicle transportation. The RC is for the motorbike racer, which will be in a class all its own. The TR is for people who plan on doing bunker runs, but need a bit more speed. And of course, for those who don't like walking. 
I imagine using the CV to run minor supplies between my ships on a single base, but not from the base to another base, only within the base. The RC I would use to race, and hopefully for whatever secondary function they give it before it releases, wink wink CIG, the TR I would use for chasing down people who are running away after causing trouble, but only if they too were in a wheeled vehicle. I know you're here for our rating, but if you really want a vehicle, go buy it. We won't stop you. Or even better, all vehicles can be earned in game once the game releases, and some you can purchase in game right now. These are just our ratings, but when you spend, it's your money. My opinion, these are all going to be dirt cheap in game. So even the ones I like, I would say are earning game for me. All right, that is it for this one. Shout out to the members. Thanks for spending your time with us. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.